Hello and welcome to another edition of L.A. Reggae. I'm Roger Staffens, and today we're visiting once again with one of the most important figures in the history of Jamaican music, um, one of the true survivors in the business and in, uh, in life, Peter Tosh. Peter, welcome back to Los Angeles. Hi, Harry. Um, don't want to waste any time. I want to get right to the heart of things. Yes. Did you read Tim White's book? No, I got a copy, though. Somebody gave me a copy. A lady gave me a copy the other day somewhere about the place. So I shouldn't ask you any questions about that. Mm, no. Speaking of books, though, I understand that uh, you may take a little time out from the music business and uh, write a book yourself. Yes, I'm in action doing that right now, because too much people writing books off I and waiting to write books off I. And I have never written a book off of myself yet. And, and all of them has been for commercial reasons. See? And then at the same time try to prove, prove me uncommercially unsuccessful. What's the book going to be about? Is it your life story? Is it about the music business? Is it about the whalers? Well, it will be everything because my life includes everything. Seeing the whalers, my community real environment and spiritual environment and all these things from church till now. So it will be a Rastafarian book. Yeah, exactly. What was your impetus to finally start work on a book? What what pushed you into that act finally? Well, as I said, there are so many people writing about me. And what the people have been writing is propaganda and public mischief, or what they imagine about me, or what they hear about me, or what they think about me every time. Because many of them haven't got the guts enough to sit down truthfully and reason with me to know the facts of my life. See, they only judge the book by the cover every time and they write. Well, I am going to write some of the facts of my life because all the facts of my life cannot be written in one book. That would be an encyclopedia. See? But chapter one is ready. Yes, chapter one is in function right now. First Peter, chapter one. <laughs> Are you going to do any prophesying in the book? Prophesying? I've always prophesied. That's I know, that's why I asked. Well, we don't know what the future holds because Sometimes these things are not intentionally done. They just happen. So we don't know what the final conclusion of the book may work out to. Same. But then again, what is to be, must be done. Peter, where is reggae strongest right now in the world? In the world, in yeah. Europe. In Europe? Yeah, in Europe and Africa. What about Australia? Australia. You yeah. just played there, yes. right? Yes, Australia is very heavy, man. I love it. First time I've been there, and the people love it, love it. Were you persecuted for herb at all there? No. But the ministers of the shit team always try to create elements around me to make it look like I'm a smuggler. Or I'm a herb distributor. Hmm. Do you I'm smoke on stage in Australia? In Australia? Hmm. I smoke in real world. Australia hmm. is just another place. When I went to As when I went to Australia, I was in um, Brisbane. No, not Brisbane, it's Sydney. Gold Coast. Adelaide? Mm. Sydney? Gold Coast. Mm. And um, I was at the hotel and somebody came to the hotel and told me that um, the, the commissioner of the police, or the chief of the police rather, came to the, came to the, um, the sound check to tell me that um, they, they are asking me not to smoke on stage. Because the people, the community, they've been spreading propaganda that I um, want to teach their children to smoke herb and all these things. But if all their children were smoking herb, they wouldn't have these immune symptoms, breaking down symptoms. So you think herb is a cure for herpes and AIDS? If people was consuming herb for a long time, man, they wouldn't have all these diseases. Because first thing, herb directs you onto morality. See, and one cannot smoke herb now, catch herpes and come back and smoke herb and things that can cure him. Herb was designed for spiritual reason. It's a preventative, not a cure. 
Tell me about No Fixed Address. I understand Australia's all Aboriginal reggae band opened some of your shows for you in Australia. Is that yes. right? What are they like? Well, there are some Indian looking kind of people. You know about them? Dark complexion, some black, you know, mixture of complexion. But I guess the African, and then I think it knows everything features. And they have the message of Rastafari in their No, movie. them don't have the message of Rastafari. Right. They are researching on that. They are, you know, the message is just getting across. It's 30 hours away from, from Jamaica to Australia, or from America to Australia. So you can imagine how much years away that is. Yes. Yeah, man. So it's just getting into um, the vines of Australia. People are just beginning to pick up the essence or the fragrance of Rasta. They have not yet penetrated the spirituality. No. But in Africa, the message has been heard and heeded and acted upon. There are reggae groups all over West Africa. Mm -hmm. In South Africa, despite the apartheid, there is uh, a whole number of reggae groups yeah. that are bringing the message not only of Rasta but of revolution to that sure, country. Sure, sure. Two of those musicians were arrested and put in jail for four years recently yes, for I playing heard. reggae music. You probably heard about that. Yes, I heard about something like that. For playing reggae music, can you imagine how dangerous the music is, man? Yeah. See? And these are, these are one of the main reasons why I cancelled my, 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 my thing because they wanted to send me to, um, to, to uh, Israel. Israel. And why did you cancel? Because of the affiliation with South Africa internal and external affiliation with South Africa. Is it more of a legal affiliation than America's affiliation with South Africa? Oh, look at all the American companies that are doing business in South Africa. Why wouldn't you stop touring America for the same reason? Well, America is like the channel to many other places. So you need America? You have to come to America to go to many other places. Mm -hmm. I don't, I have already told them that apartheid is everywhere. And I'm not ashamed to say that. Mm -hmm. Because racial discrimination is the foundation, is headquarters in America. That's why I have the White House. Mm -hmm. See? And we don't know that. But then again, you have to be an intelligent diplomat within the shit thing. See? And there is no legal way of doing transaction with South Africa. Mm -hmm. See? Like, you cannot call, you cannot say, a good restaurant. That's right. redundant. A yes. Rasta man yes. is a good person. Always. And many people always make that mistake every time by talking about the big good Rasta. You know, when Jack Anderson did his syndicated column recently saying that Rastas were a bunch of terrorists who were here to assassinate government officials, Muda Baruka said, how come in the newspaper you never see someone saying three Christians arrested for bank robbery or no. three Christians arrested for murder? Serious thing. I guess still, as you see, the reasons for that now is because Christianity, when it came to the West, it was converted into devil worship. See? And deplorability, spiritual morality has died within the realms of Christianity. And these are the things that Christians promote. Everything that is deadly, the guns, the nuclear weapons, all of those guys go to church who make these things. See? And they are Christians. Who is Pope John Paul II? Pope John Paul. Who is he? Who does he symbolize in these times? Well, Pope mm -hmm. John Paul, according to him, is the leader of all denominations and organizations of Christianity. Which Christianity, as I said, is the opposite of the reality of righteousness. That means it's devil's business. Paganism. See, and they know that. Last year, uh, in your previous performance at the Country Club, one of the two nights you made a prophecy. And I wonder if you'd be kind enough to repeat that so uh, we can get it on the record. It was about the seven plagues. The plagues. Well, then, you see, these things, you don't repeat them. You say them once, and they manifest themselves. Is it a thing that you say for the benefit of someone? Well, I wanted it for the benefit of more people than just the people well, who were in the nightclub happens. like that. Well, way. for example, no, you have heard it, and you are the one who must say it. I must not repeat it. Different yeah. principles. Yeah. See? Yeah, man. Yeah. But you stand by that prophecy that yes. you made last year. And, and the, the greatest thing, I always stand by what I say, man. The greatest thing about it, one's worth there. See? You were there as a living witness, and you are still here. And with your eyes. People are still talking about that. 
you know, yeah. eight, nine months after the fact. Yeah. There are many more things to happen, and them don't see nothing yet. Many more things to happen. And these things must happen. That's why I have to leave these places. I'm getting on top of my nerves now. You see, because death is in its highest promotion. See, everything that you see for sale, it kills. The things that, everything that man invent is deadly and dangerous. It's in promotion. And the only time you know how deadly it is, is after you have consumed a portion of it for a period of your life, then you have automatically become dead and not know. Do I take it you are anti-consumer then? I anti everything that is civilization. Yeah, but it's the civilization that puts your message across by the technology, yes, well, the presses, I, records, and everything. So where, do you, where, Peter, where do you draw the line? Yeah. Where do you draw the line I'm between a, useful that. technology and that which is Babylon? Yes, well, I'm a diplomat enjoying my lines. These technology are here for accesses. See, you use them. You don't make them you. You don't let them control you. Most people think these things computer is becoming so much advanced now and becoming so much a part of people's life that soon people don't want to buy shit anymore they send the computer to do that see and i can't live in a world like that and talking about draw a line the only time i would draw a line is when i reach home and i say well i'm not going to leave home no more and time i draw the line but how can i draw a line when i'm an alien here all right now unless i have misunderstood you for the past five years of conversation Home for you is Ethiopia. Yes. When can you go back to Ethiopia? Anytime, no. Is, is the political situation within the nation of Ethiopia stable enough to allow you to go there? Well, I know much about that. All of Ethiopia is not going to go. All of Africa. Yeah. But since the invasion and, and the imperialism and communism and socialism and all form of Christianism came to the land, it became Africa. But all of it is mine. We belong to all of us. See, and every nation on earth has his part of earth, and every man has a place that he belongs. And every fig must find its fig tree. To quote another great poet. Yes, that is true. <laughs> uh, now, speaking of Bunny Whaler, um, is it true? Is Rastaman coming up strong once more? Are Bunny and Peter going to reform the Whalers with Vision and Junior Brathwaite? Yes, we're working on that right now. Man, Bunny's supposed to be going to well, I, I don't know about Junior yet, but I know Vision is with me. Yeah. That means in the form of work that the contribution was, you know, rebuilding this group, see, and to, you know, produce some music. Vision is involved. Are you thinking of it as the Whalers? Yeah, man. What yeah. happens to the Whalers band then? Of the original. No. The Whalers Band, what happened to Carly and, and uh, Tyrone? And the bomb book like that, talk about Carly and Tyrone, man. Only a way that Carly and Tyrone can sing. Mm -hmm. Not very well, I don't no, think. No, we don't know of that. See, when well, these are things that the world still don't understand. So you will come and back as the Whalers? As the Whalers. And the there has been no other Whalers but I. See, there are lots of imposters in the search. And to every first, there always come a second. See, to every reality, always come a fantasy. Scene, and the fantasy wanted to come and live the life of the life of the reality and to say that I am he that can't work because to be a whale I have to cry see God, that's what it means to go through troubles temptation see humiliations and aggravation police brutality how much of them ever go through that how much of them ever been to jail how much of them ever been humiliated how much of them ever been executed see so a man can't come with claims because he was playing with Bob Marley, and Bob Marley was not the whalers neither. See, Bob Marley was Bob Marley. See, and that's how he wanted it to be. And he had it that way because it was the whalers before the segregation came with Chris Whitehurst in London, 1973. See, and he was the one who agreed or stimulated the thought of having this idea of Bob Marley and the Wheelers. Well, Peter, we have some of your earliest singles here.
And your first label, which featured the three hands interlinked on Whalen Solem, is very clearly labeled Bob Marley and the Wailing Whalers. Mm -hmm. Now that's six, seven years before Chris mm -hmm. and Island. Mm -hmm. So that is where it started. When you set up your own label, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whose idea was it to call it Bob Marley and the Whalers? Well, it must be Bob's idea. And it was the Whalers all the way, and you know that. See? When we, when, when we went to England, oh, that's where the album came out as Bob Marley and the Whalers. Now, actually, the Catch a Fire and Burning were both released under the name The Whalers. Do we yeah, it wasn't until Natty no. Dread that it said no. Bob Marley and the Whalers. No, 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 it wasn't Bob Marley and the Whalers, no. But he was upset. The repackage was. I don't know if we but got The very first one, Catch a Fire, just said The Whalers. The, mm -hmm. the lighter top mm -hmm. said The Whalers. So did mm -hmm. Burning. Well, maybe, but no, it is Bob Marley and the Whalers. Yeah. But my point is, I mean, even here on Lee Perry's sessions, it was Bob Marley and the Whalers. Mm -hmm. you know? Um... Why now? Why do you and Bunny want to come back and mush the world as the Whalers once more? Well... Come forward, excuse me. Well, for example, for example, the Whalers is still the Whalers, and still the Whalers still maintain that spiritual being and that potential, musical potential. And not only that, but the Whalers at that time, the Whalers today is greater than the Whalers at that time. More progressive, more advanced in both technology and the creativity and our concept of the music see because in those times you do two track one track recording see and now we do 24 track up to 36 tracks will you tour hmm? will you tour will we last tour yes well africa africa yeah man has to be africa before yeah. you go anywhere else yes africa are somewhere near going to africa i mean we are on the way to africa would that include europe then well, that could have been, yeah. It could not have been on a place like that. You know. So we can't expect to see the whalers live in the states for any time. Soon. Well, we don't know what can happen. Maybe we can pass through here to go into go into Africa, because that is our final farewell. And then you will live in Africa. Yes. It's interesting because Neville Garrick was in town a couple of weeks ago, and he went to Kenya in June, and he's decided to move there with his family next yes, year and become a Rasta missionary. Yes. If if you go back to if you go forward to Africa, what part appeals to you? What well, part of the continent? Well, for example, when I've been to Africa recently, it was that was Nigeria, Nigeria, right? Nigeria, and that was the most beautiful part of Africa. Yet it was beautiful. Finland, there are many more places to check out. So I'm on an expedition checking out the different different places. Mm -hmm. I'll be going to, uh, this Europe European tour will take me to um to um, Zimbabwe. Mm. Um it was to be December but we can't wait till further on in the year, maybe January, February or something like that. So when I go to Zimbabwe I hear it's a very beautiful place to so to tell. <laughs> There's a waterfall in Zimbabwe on that tape. You know what? You know what? Flat is a waterfall, man. The most beautiful thing is, man. That's where my spirit came from, the water. And me have to live beside a river and a waterfall. You know? That should be about the end of that 20, right? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was saying, like, um... Like, I meet a lot of girls from Africa, all parts of Africa, you know, mm -hmm. and I see them try, but I never really see them, like, try to really, like, praise Rastafari to the fullest, like, there's yeah. like, more time they fight down Rastafari, you yeah, know, man. like, they say bad things about Jai. Yeah, man, yeah, man, many times, but these things can be explained, though, for example. Can we put this on tape and let me oh, ask the same yeah. question? Okay. Yeah, yeah, man. I have to answer Are you the I'm changing the tips. Okay. Well, let's get it on video. Yeah, we don't want to talk. You can repeat it. I'm going to like repeat myself. No. No. Now, is there anything that you want to talk about in particular? Is there anything else you want to ask about? Yeah, man. About what the company is doing. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. man. We are talking about, man. With the right. They think we want that to be public. We know. Right. We don't want anybody to feel so well. Miss one little... Mr. Nigga, who afraid of them? Well, I'll put it on the syndicated radio show yes, we do. It goes yeah, to Africa. Yeah, We're on the Voice of America yeah, in Africa. There's yes, 30 right. million people on Saturday. Yes, that man you in. Yeah, that little yeah, reggae man. show that we started is now international. Yeah, Paris. Man. It's the ages of discrimination within the shit, man, with diplomacy, man. 
I'm going to look at diplomatic. We pretending like them helping you. Them give a little hundred and fifty thousand dollars for promotion. And when them give blood clot, David Bowie money for promotion. It's a blood clot, one and a half million dollar. Mm -hmm. And twenty thousand to the party after. Oh, to bumbo blood clot. Them take we for some idiot. Me not join that blood clot. Can't even go to Africa for go play with brother. It's bumbo clot. Thousands of people they have to use binacle and this is the last one. Don't oh, fucking tell me about the stain and belittle my integrity for some little bomb of blood clot. You know what I'm saying? They got a one minute here. Okay. Oh, them bomb of clot. I don't know what's going to happen. You're fucker going on. I mean, don't see, man. Everything is here to keep I and I at the level that they brought us out of, out of Africa and come here. See, 300 fucking years ago, they want to keep us at, at that level. See, you're not supposed to have a lot of fucking television. See, them soon start tell black man can't yeah, come in a certain hotels again. And that's why I'm going to leave this blood clad place. Oh, me? I got bomb my blood clad, man. Right now, man. We got two years ago, I go to a hotel in Boston, man. And this bomb clad, the people them say them, them don't want to be in there because we're black. Cradle of democracy, Boston, Massachusetts. You tell me blood clad. Me, I can't take them to hear me fire my gun. In Boston, my gunshot went mm -hmm. fire. So we are right that. Uh, I hear the gun fire. I tell him it's judgment. No, we know. Just say when, John. We are living in the dispensation of judgment. No. These are the final days. No. All right. Continue. In all of reggae, I know of nobody who is a stronger opponent of evil than Peter Tosh. And he's almost lost his life more than once, speaking the truth. A couple of days ago, one of the people who was trying to get the truth out, Michael Smith, was killed in Kingston. Are you ever afraid, Peter? Well, in times gone by, cause fear is what creates. Fear is what they call afraid. What they call afraid? Fear. Is, yeah is what makes you afraid when you're in fear mm -hmm. but <clears throat> when you're in fear is when you're not in communication with the almighty i don't live up to the divine principles of the almighty see so that create fear because the conscience is always there and the eyes and the hands has registered everything that you have done see so when what you have done is negative to the internal or to the what you would call the conscience then it creates fear, even though you may not project it, project that fear on the external. You may not do that just to prove your masculinity. See? But then again, there is fear inside because when one knows of his fear is when he's alone. See? When you're among people, it is not shown. What do you like when you're alone? Then? When I'm alone? Mm. Well, I can sometimes, it's incredible to describe what, I, what, what am I like. If you should sneak in on me, <coughs> invisibly, mm -hmm. when I'm alone, you will find the reason with myself, and you would wonder, who, who and I is there? Come on, a reason with the inner spirits. You do it a lot with your guitar, don't you? Come on, and let it channel on, right through. True, true. You true. tune in. Yes, I, every time. Why is reggae being held back? Why is there such a worldwide, it seems almost like a conspiracy to keep reggae from getting through these days? It is not, it, is not, <clears throat> it seems like it's a conspiracy. It is a conspiracy. See? It's a paid conspiracy too. A, pay, a paid one? Paid by who? Paid conspiracy. By the ministers of propaganda and public mischief. And the ministers of definition of character. See? And the ministers of propaganda is those who try to show you that Emperor Haile Selassie, who is our king of kings, is dead. See? And this was the first biggest propaganda they did in this dispensation of time. But prophecy showed I that. That in this dispensation of time, man would have said that our creator is dead. But then if that did not happen, then who would come to the conclusion that he is the Almighty? See? So because it is his divine inspiration that gives us this music. See, that means anything that is orientated from his divine inspiration in this Christian democratic world, they will try to eliminate. The forces of evil is busy doing that. Chum bomb up. They were trying to take it off that blood. Hey, don't call now. Bomb, take it 
Um, are you satisfied with the way that your new album and your hit single Johnny Be Good have been promoted in America? No, <coughs> that was not my hit single. It got on MTV and it got on the pop charts. Yes, that don't make it a hit. That is the shit within the society and the diplomacy in making it look to the people that it is a hit, but to them it is not a hit. You see? When that is projected in the minds of the people, it will look because if you see it as a hit, many millions of people will see it as a hit. Mm -hmm. See? And when they see it as a hit, you know what is created in their mind. I have money. See? <laughs> and that is, general, that is one of the way, diplomatic <coughs> way, of assassination, spiritual and verbal assassination, see, and I know the devil's trick in every way that they try, see, because if everybody starts to think that me have money, them start to say that I have money, I don't know what I'm doing with it, see, I must be, do I didn't have all kind of negative things to say when you have money, what to do with it, see, and I don't have no money, I intend to have money, the shit still is trying their best to see to it that I don't have no money. But they will make these little elements create around me that people have me down as a millionaire as they did with bob marley see and brand you and have you as a target out there a millionaire see and that is the verbal way of killing you so you don't really have a hit you're not being promoted properly or no what? no 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 the system is still in campaign campaign against reggae music see what you hear going on is just because i'm doing my best because when time I have a contract with any company, I do my best. But every time I don't, I never know time I ever see the company done their best or a fraction of what they call the best. <coughs> See? Because I've been watching the medias and who is con in control of the medias. And I see where, <coughs> for example, it is a conspiracy to see to it that reggae is not being played on black radio stations in America. See, like it is a conspiracy to see to it that drugs get into all the black communities to poison the nation. And see? stop the revolution. See? So, because the music is an awakening to the slumbering mentality <clears throat> of those who have been caught up in the shit stem, the conspiracy is a paid conspiracy. And I know that. See, and because they are branding me now as leader because Bob Marley is gone, they want to put there that's why they were trying to put me in his shoe and in his category and that is i'm irrelevant to bob marley can't compare me to bob marley can't put me nowhere near bob marley see see so it's a general campaign to keep reggae at a level you're not supposed to sell more than 150 or maybe 200 thousand and then then brand new it hit and it don't go further than 67 on the chart Unless you're a cute little kid, like a Smurf, and you can take the drug lyric yes, and change yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then they've let you sell seven million. And sing, darling, I love you till the stars even, are green. Even the crack I'm You see, when you look in the, the calendar, you can see all the pop music with full page ad. Yeah, yeah, man. It's like, look how the reggae artists kick in, you don't see a full page yeah, ad. Yeah, must not. You know, it's I a general system. Now. Yeah. It's a part of the campaign. They say they don't know how to, to uh, market they, reggae. They don't know, but they are still trying for 10 years. They've been trying to exploit the music in the best nature and admonition. But and they don't know how. They, they, don't, they don't know how and they don't want to know how. They because they don't know. ask the right people. They are not interested to know. I spoke with them some time, and the, and the and our guys say, even with Bob Marley, they were distributing Bob Marley through um, Island. They said they never know how to, to, um, to, to market reggae. Let me tell you. Yeah. Who that? Oh, yeah, who will land on the car where I interview? See? All right, cool. All right, let me, let me ask one final wrap up question here. Um, Peter, what does the future hold for you? The future with me is in Africa. As you can't take the discrimination. See? And uh, I remember when, where I came from, or where I'm coming from, I don't intend to go back there anymore, because I don't walk backwards. 
forward ever, backward never. Don't look back. And <coughs> my song say, Mama, Africa. He's just telling my mother, Africa, that I am coming home. See, I am sick and tired of being abused indefinitely, indirectly and directly, diplomatically, <coughs> condemned, humiliated, brutalized. You see, and the amount of plots and my life daily continual. But that don't put me in fear. I'm not going in exile. Because they can't do me nothing. My father gash lightning and thunder, heart attack a guy. See? So if a guy thinks he can sit down and try to bring his evil devices to pass upon my head, it's impossible. Because you know why? The sun shall not smite eye by day, nor the moon by night, nor the pestilence that walk by day, nor destruction that wasted at noonday, nor destruction that lurks in darkness. None of them can do I no wrong. See? And that is my move. Remake of uh, the classic Chuck Berry song from the mid-50s, Johnny Be Good, reggae style. Peter, what uh, prompted you to cut that particular song? Well, for example, nothing prompted me that much. I was working on the album Mama Africa, and one of my musicians, um, Donna, who plays this Chuck Berry style of guitar, mentioned it to me. If I would like, if I would like to do this song, if, it, if I would like it, I say, I don't know it more than so. And I'm starting to hum the melody. And so work on it. We see if it can be done. I see how it sound. I worked on it and. Just meanwhile dubbing on some vocal, some vocal, lead vocal and some other tracks. And came with a track and just tried it, listened to him singing the lead and sing it. And it sounded like it can be commercially acceptable. And if that can be commercially acceptable, I don't mind. Because if it can sell 25 million, 25 million people know me more. Do you see any link between the message of that song about someone breaking through just from his very, very sheer desire to break through and Rasta? Well, for example, the song, the song says, Johnny, be good, Johnny. And the title yeah. is totally relevant to my liberty. Go, what is bad in telling a man to be good? See you. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> You know, Johnny Osborne just uh, changed his name to J-A-H-N-I, mm. and he's recording with Sky High now. That can't change name. That's what a man I try to do. Every yeah. man no one change them name, and them one baptize me some organization, and them one get so jolly now that I'm going to check them liberty. You see, if I'm not condemning any man still individually, but I'm just telling them of the liberty of many people now. They want to get too close to righteousness to be only affiliated with righteousness. But mm -hmm. I don't think in Johnny's case, it's in, I think no, Johnny's well, been singing the praises for a long time. Well, he's not singing the praises, he's leaving the praises I have now. Now he seems to have cited up the full yeah, name, he's nodding up, and he's changed his name. Yeah, man, God, oh man, better live in a <coughs> man, talk a lot. Yeah, man, but to live it is a different <laughs> blood clot thing. <laughs> yeah, man. Peter, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for your time. You know, you know that. Is there anything I can do for you? Anything you're looking for, anything you need? Well, for example, um... Can I try to stop you midway in the speech? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. All them big blood clad photographs just drop off of the wall. So ring when we touch at certain points that have never been touched in colonial and imperialistic history to blood clad. What? This is August 1981, and Peter Tosh has finally returned to the West Coast after a two-year absence, and we're delighted to be here talking today to the Bush doctor himself, Peter Tosh. Peter, welcome back to California. Why a two-year break in touring in California? Well, I've been working all these years, and because I own one obligation, I think it is right for when I feel like I am ready to take a break. Mm -hmm. I take a break. See? Plus you put a new album in it. Yes. <coughs> and I also have enough material for another album. 
in this time. You never know. Is it possible that you'll ever do an album, Peter, of your collected Jamaican singles, the things that never get on the international albums? Yes, well, in times coming up. Things like Hammer and Vampire. Harder than you can think of. Now, you just re-released You Can't Blame the Youth on Intel Diplo probably about a year ago. Um, was that a remix of the original version? Can't Blame the Youth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> yes. It's a new, it's a re-recorded version, yeah. yeah. When do you decide to include things on a foreign released album, and when do you decide to withhold things just for the Jamaican market? What what criterion do you use? There is no specific one. It's just, it's just like you don't have nothing planned, nothing prepared. We are, you know, the transmission of the music. You just feel like putting that one here and do it. It's not to say that because all of my music as a qualifications or qualities within it to make it capable of being a product of a universal market. See? So I don't have none special in Jamaica, no one special business, unless it is mixed with, you know, less weight for the Jamaican product. Wait a minute, less weight? Less weight. I mean more weight for the Jamaican product. Uh -huh. Less weight for the uh, American product. See? Base heavy in Jamaica. <coughs> yes, every time. Yes, we are getting into it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Now the obvious question, which is kind of a contradiction, is that the most obvious Jamaican single you've made in years is Obumbaclot, and I couldn't find anyone in Jamaica last week who'd heard it. What? Can you imagine that? Yeah. It's a Jamaican national anthem. Mm -hmm. But it's like goes every time. You know, when I made legalize it, people would not buy it because they were scared of buying it. Is well, it available in Jamaica? To which one? Legalize? Oh, Bumba Club. Yes. I, no, I, well, when I left here, it was preparing to be there. I don't know if it has been up on the preparation. Will it be the Gwen Guthrie duet on the other side, on no, the Jamaican? I don't think so. I think it's a version, the rhythm. Mm -hmm. Now, that's become a sing-along for your encore in your current tour, O Bumba Club. Mm -hmm. And yet, most people in this country are unaware what Bumba Club really is, and we had a lot of calls Sunday at the show to explain, first of all, what Bumba Club meant, and secondly, why it would be banned. Uh, could you answer those questions for all the people why here? it would be banned? <coughs> well, everything that speaks the truth is banned automatically mm -hmm. within the ship still. And Bumba Club is just another African word with spiritual vibration, with heavy spiritual vibration that the ministers of technology and evil knows. So because they know of the originations or the origins of the word and its power thereof, they are trying to put a ban on it. But it cannot be banned because it is in people's mind and it is transmitted from people to people. See? <coughs> And as long as it's going around to people, people will know it. But it's not to know the word, it's to know how to use the word for it to have that powerful vibration. See? And, well, because it's not a word that was taught in school. It was being, it has its characters definited, see? But it has such a powerful spiritual ingredients that it drives away evil, see? So because I know that, I sing it. Yeah. Would you be willing to give us a literal definition of it? Of? Bumba clock? A definition of Bumba clock? Well, <coughs> it's for example, um, someone, young someone, is together, and that someone continues continuously doing something that you don't like. And you say, in Jamaica, we would say, rest no man, and then do it again, you say, sure, rest no man. Next time, do it again, you say, sure, rest no man. This is going to do it again. Such a bombo clad. And you stop. Yeah, man. Sounds <laughs> magic to me. <laughs> Feel the vibe you shot. <laughs> what about Ross Clot? Same definition. When you say bombo Ross Clot, it's a double vibration. <laughs> yes, I. But it is all, you know, taking black people out of Africa, which they are their language, they are not coming here with English language. 
So they took approximately 90%, but it is even a few percent of our language is left in us that no guy can interpret. See? It's so dangerous, in fact, that you can be arrested in Jamaica for using the word Rosclot. Yes, but the reason why I use it is because the guys who arrest you cannot tell you the reason why they arrest you. <laughs> See? See? So true, I know that. They can't tell you, you can tell me, say, don't do this, and you can't tell me the reason why I must do it. It's madness, and I do appreciate that. I like to investigate things myself. I don't like to be led. See? Because blind cannot lead blind. And I know that. When we were in Jamaica, we found a real double standard. Uh, on one hand, Siaga, the new prime minister, is saying to people, you can bring your dollars earned through the ganja trade into the banks, and we won't ask you any questions. On the other hand, there have been more busts of ganja traders than ever before in the history of Jamaica under Siaga. What's going on? Politics as usual. Nothing has changed. Whereas the Rastaman does not affiliate itself with the politics of the world. Well, that's not Rastaman's business. See, we don't want to get branded to associate the politics. That is people's affair. See, and because the Rastaman knows the concept of politics and the technologies thereof, we just stay aside and just watch it. It's a game. But the politicsters attempted to take over Sunsplash this year. It had, quote, official government sponsorship now. Is that one of the reasons you weren't there? Well, I don't know. The reason why I'm not there is because I am here. And I could not be here there mm -hmm. at the same time. So well, if you had been in Jamaica without an international tour happening at the same time, would you have considered performing under government sponsorship? As long as every man gets their card, it is work. Mm -hmm. And what is due to Caesar, I give it unto Caesar. And if they would give unto Peter what is due to Peter, maybe Peter would be there. Now you can fill stadiums in places like Italy and, and Sweden, and yet your, your music is still banned at home. <clears throat> and you suffer a great deal of repression for your political statements. Uh, do you ever consider holding back on what you would say in order to get more acceptance? Mm -hmm. You see, what I would say, or what I say, is inspiration that I get, see? And when I get my inspiration, it's come, it comes divine from God. And I just sing them. There is nothing that I can hold back. When the breeze comes, it just comes. When the sun comes through, it all comes. And when rain comes, it comes. So why should I come and hold back? See? Yes, I. What was the inspiration for coming in hot? Did it have anything to do with Marley's coming in from the cold? No. Well, mango tree, beer mango, apple tree, beer apple. See? And I am always hot. And I always come in hot. But it, it was physical experience. When 19... I was coming to a conclusion, stepping into 1981. At the end of the month, I was 104 degrees, stepping into 1981. Mm. So, In Jamaica? Yeah, man. Um, I mean, hot, 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 <laughs> that all the high bar, hot. <laughs> yeah, man. And did that give you reggae my lightest? No, that's not what gave me reggae my life. I was born with that. I would never realize. <laughs> See? But because I was so hot at that moment, and for three days I was at the temperature 104, I never go to no doctor. Just maintain stamina and just know so well my mind counteracting the table. See? Did you have herbal medicines too? I don't ever drink no medicine. I just, just get certain leaves, green leaves, and just put them on the chest. The I go to bed. And leaves extract some of the temperature. 
What kind of leaves, Peter? Leaf of life and some other leaves. You know, herb leaves. We had some roots wine when we were at Sunsplash with yeah. the jump up root. And I don't know, so we used to have two different kind of roots wine. You have alcoholic roots wine and non alcoholic roots wine. This was non alcoholic. Oh, sure. Gully root. Yeah. There's some funny name about girl jump up and kick and scream root. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a long name like that. You got punch in you. Yeah. So you are totally into herbal cures, uh, herbal medicine, obviously. Yeah, well, every time. Why do you think the drug companies prevent herbal medicines from being used? Why, why must uh, Western medicine be so artificial? Everything in the West is artificial. Everything? Yes, everything, is, everything that's invented is artificial. That means records are artificial. Everything is artificial. Or everything, everything is natural. Everything is artificial. See? So we cannot watch the artificial thing as artificial us know what is the runnings, what is to be done, electrically done in John Mills. And yet your work has spread worldwide now because of artificial methods. Yes. But that does not make me artificial. <laughs> no yeah. type things in an artificial way. Yes, in the right way. To get across to the official, official people. Peter, I want to take a quick trip down memory lane with you. Chuck Kroll has been photographing you since 1973, and I want to show you a couple of pictures and ask you what uh, you remember when you see them, if that's all right with you. This is in a motel on the tour in 1973, and I'd like to clear up some things. As I understand it, you and Joe Higgs and Bob toured as the Whalers as opening act for Sly and the Family Stone for four shows, and then you were abandoned in Las, in Las Vegas? Is, is, is that what happened? Well, yes. we were supposed to do about 12 shows with Sly and the Family Stones. And it worked out that the single did were too dangerous. And it was creating a competitive scene. You were doing better than Sly, huh? Maybe it looks up. So we ended up doing only four. And where did you end up? Uh, were you left in Vegas? I mean, it was Las Vegas, yeah, Las Vegas. Well, I know the backward history, I them to concentrate on them. They are frustrations after my... There's Joe Higg. Yeah. Joe taught you to sing harmony, hmm? Taught I to sing harmony. No one taught I to sing harmony. I was born a singer. Yeah, man. But yeah. Joe did work with the early yes, whalers, yes, right? Man. Joe was, you know, as an elder one in the music scene. He used to direct I and I in the system because he was in the music scene before and I Higgs and Wilson. Yes man. But I am on noticing how many from I was born. Do you remember anything specific <coughs> about those kind of clinical sessions that uh, J uh, Joe Higgs would have in Trenchtown? You mean what kind of session? Where people would sit around and jam and yet he would stop the jam and say, Oh wait a minute, that's off key, sing that note again. Yeah man. Yes man, yeah man, yeah man. Were they in Joe's yard? Yeah man. On Third Street, between Third Street and Second Street, uh, we have to cut the change. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up is a picture taken in 1978 at the Burbank Starlight Amphitheater with Peter Tosh and Bob Marley. And to the best of my knowledge, these pictures are the only show that you and Bob did together outside Jamaica since the breakup of the original Whalers. Is that right? Mm -hmm. What caused you to come on stage that night? Well, I am always motivated by the spirit. And whatsoever the spirits say do, I do. With a strong nature, without doubt. Same in the spirit. So I was I was like invited to the show tonight. And came to the show and Bob was performing. I came there when the show was almost finished. And he was then singing and he get up stand up. Which I just came to us as he reached the verse that I sang originally on the record. I just walk in and take the mic and sing my part. Now did he know you were gonna come on stage? No. He really didn't know. <laughs> Great. Well, look at the expression on his face. Yeah, well, yeah. What did he say to you after the show? Well, I remember one thing he said. 
he came to me and he clapped my hand and I said to him, no, he held out his hand like this and I clapped his hand and said, who feel that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, three years later the coat died, but don't feel no way. That's just how it goes. What we can do to our tablets. <laughs> I remember you told us that you were writing a song called Here We Are Together Again for you and Bob and Bunny to sing and then I think I mentioned that we saw Bob about a month after that when he was here and he said he'd be willing to sing it except right now you were on different roads but it could be the same road again and then he would consider singing it. I asked him specifically if he would. He said, well, yes, sure. Well, because of the past. Would be very beautiful if, if it was manifested. Now that it could not be manifested because of spiritual reasons which our eyes physically cannot see, we will not even debate the subject. You know? <laughs> Another one that got away. But there are a lot that didn't get away. Here are some pictures from uh, the Tamlins tour. One of the reviewers, I think, back in New York referred to the Tamlins as the three female backup singers. <laughs> I don't think they'd like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Brett Chinna, yeah, the big but, youth tour here. Now you have a new band, or at least half of a new band. You have uh, two of the strongest players in the history of Jamaican music, Santa on drums and yeah, Fully Fullwood on bass. And I, let me tell you that Fully and you sound phenomenal together. Yes, come on. It's like we were playing for years. Charlie Comer told me about the New York Daily News review of the show with Santa and Fully, one of the first ones you did together. Mm. And the reviewer said, well, of course, Sly and Robbie have been playing with Peter for 10 years, and it really shows because they understand each other intimately, and you oh, can tell it. <laughs> so yeah, what happened to Sly and Robbie? Taxi business? Yeah, happy it is taxi business. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get involved in that. And because I'm going to have this business, which is in the business. Mm -hmm. Nothing which have to, you know, continue on the road, you know, and because of those things, you know, I have to let them go free to do what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stopping the tour for a while. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did that a couple of times so that they could accomplish their work, mm -hmm. which was not beneficial to me. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right in the middle of the tour. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see doing a tour with the Revolutionaries again at some time? The Revolutionaries? Well, it's Lion Robbie. Um, Lion Robbie? Yes, no, I mean, in case I'm making music and they are available, and my musicians are not available still, I can do some work. I hear, was it Nuremberg? was a place that you mushed it up where Hitler used to do his speeches. How did it feel to be in a place like that? Well, it feels good to know that I see the history, see, and see the great walls of history. When you look at the walls, your imagination can paint the picture of the happenings. Even behind those walls, I see some historical walls man, and some prisons. But I said, why? Hitler really had something in his mind. <laughs> you know, yeah, well. There are all kinds of Israelites. Yes. What about uh, the shows in England? I understand there was some trouble in London. Mm, was it kind. London? All kind. Uh, too many people trying to get in, not enough space for all the people. Well, that always gone, especially when you reach to London. Uh, 4,000 people have to go back and the part of the business, you know, mm -hmm. until them can find a proper thing, you know, spacious and wide. Mm. Now, the last time you were here, you seemed to be working out some difficulties with Rolling Stones records. That appears to have been solved because your new album is out on EMI Rolling Stones. Yeah. Um, do you have other projects planned with Rolling Stones records? Yes. If it is to be, it will. It don't manifest itself yet. But if it is to be, let it be. What is accomplishing itself at this moment has not finished its road of running or its running up the road yet. 
when this one accomplish that running off the road then when this one is to come i will see if this one that is now finished accomplishing its mission has done good enough mm -hmm. see and i can judge by this one if i must put this one in the same basket you're on the pop charts now so uh, pop in Jamaica, pop is something we call porridge. I don't know what the <laughs> porridge. <laughs> in America, pop is red, green, and yellow soda. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> pop top. Mm. Well, if, if it's somewhere good to be, and if it can make more of my music sell that great, I don't mind what's the name, because that does not definite my character. No time. Last night in the dressing room in San Diego, you said you were having a. Uh, a constant struggle beating back the vampires right now. Who do you see as the biggest vampires for you to fight against right now? Well, I don't fight against vampires. Vampires fight against I. I only protect myself from vampires every time because I know they exist. And specifically, I mean, visually, we just don't have to see who is who. All vampires know themselves. <laughs> see, and all the righteous ones know themselves. See, there's no need to waste that name in out of millions of vampires, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, in general terms, do you see them as political leaders, business leaders, uh, what? negative people? Who, who are among the uh, your favorite vampires? Well, neither man, no concentrate on vampires, man. I concentrate on music, and I concentrate on job, Rastafari. Before this is over, why don't uh, let the people? Uh, what, uh, how you know how you feel about how they say that? How I feel about them. I feel very spiritually energetic about them. Him. And I know that all energies come from him to I. See? Mm -hmm. And I also know that he is the reality of a Western God fantasy. Mm -hmm. See? Reality is to their fancy. Yes, I. Because I know to every fantasy there is a reality. Mm -hmm. And I have investigated and explored and found out that he is. So that's why I have a son named Rastafari is. And when you say highly, he speaks of the power. When you say Selassie, he speaks of the Trinity. See? Mm -hmm. When you say um, Rast, you speak of the head. Mm -hmm. When you say Tafara, you speak of the creator of life. I read. We're going to see the sound check tomorrow. Do you know what two songs you're going to be performing in the sound check? Because we would like to talk about those two songs before we finish. Do you have any idea yet what you're going to perform? Well, maybe sometimes I pick myself up or sometimes um, one, two, Want to dread and alive. Want to dread and alive. Yeah. It's almost like an affront to those who believe in death. Yeah, man. The total opposition defies death. Because many people always misinterpret, although it is written distinctly, dread and alive. People always miss them. Some people say dead are alive. Mm -hmm. They see what they want to see, yes. instead of what it is. Yeah, well. At Sunsplash, Errol Scorcher said, in these times the righteous shall die and the wicked shall live. Do you agree with that? <laughs> that? Errol Scorcher. The righteous shall die. Upside down. Mm -hmm. And the wicked <laughs> shall live. In other words, times are getting so bad mm -hmm. that the righteous will be given leave and the wicked will be forced to stay here yeah. and watch Babylon crumble. What? Death can't come to the right. Well, I said that is the interpretation of those who, as you say, want to see things their way. Mm -hmm. See? They just create their own fantasy and paint their own pictures and manifest their own dreams. But I and I know of righteousness, and I want to see them standing around <laughs> when the force of judgment has multiplied. <laughs> On this literacy, you know? Yes, I... So these are the last days? These are the last days. We are now living in the, the closure of the dispensation of time.
Peter, any uh, final comments you want to make to folks in America, specifically in California? Yes, they always want to tell me, say, every journalist comes to me, always want to say, I am. Now that you are the new king of reggae, <laughs> I don't like hear that. I don't want to want to tell me that, because I am not new. See, I am as old as the sun, from the earth was reincarnated millions of times and still doing the same work, see, musically. And I don't want to be looked upon as no superstar, as no king, as no... My music is just music. Music is a message decorated with music for the awakening of people's consciousness and to certain levels of reality. See? And those are the things that I want, you know, people to learn of me. Leader is always what goes up must come down. Yes, and, uh, higher the monkey climb. Yes, <laughs> more exposed. In other words, you don't want any label at all. You don't no. want to be called anything. No, I, I don't want no name. I don't want no title from men, <laughs> because I don't work for men. I work for the Almighty. See, men want to put you in places where they think you look like you should be. Label. Mm -hmm. See. Once then it's easy, you get one word that tells everybody what yeah. you are, and then they don't have to think. There's so much worse to tell them what I think about it. I am a Rasta man, see? Who just come get the blessing from Jack to paint my picture musically, and it will be blessed, so blessed that it must hypnotize my audience, see? So that's what I am doing and to show people the potential of reggae music because the characters of reggae music has been definitely for all the ages and it has reached nowhere it's like it hasn't got no ability okay? so I stand here representing my music which is my culture which was born in me which was not influenced okay? and what is right so I'm uh, just trying to accomplish this mission and to go home. Mm -hmm. sure. And the work is done. Yes, I know. Well, both Hank and I and uh, the LA reggae people wish you all the very best of luck. Uh, you don't need luck. You have job guidance going yes, for you. Sir. And thank you very much for spending this time with us. Now these are all chucks, so if you're interested in any of these, he's got to come through with us. Bring Mary. Thank you for the time. It's been probably about 40 whalers takes to get anything else off hand? Anything you're looking for? These are just copper people. Hang on, otherwise, this is their mind. Have you seen on that before? No, I know. Or any of that? Yeah. I have a little phone.